everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. I'm Jacqueline and this is Low Carb Lish, the channel where we make low carb versions of our favorite high carb foods to help control our blood sugars and try to reverse type 2 diabetes. Today we are going to be making a low calorie and low carb delicious meatloaf. So if you like meatloaf, this may be the recipe for you. Um, I've got a pound of ground pork here and a pound of ground turkey. Um, you can use ground beef, you know, any kind of ground meat that you like you can use. I'm going with these because I like the taste of them and also because they're lower calorie. So that's what we're doing today. But you can use ground beef if you want to. So um, I've got two beaten eggs. I've got a tablespoon of coconut aminos. If you don't have coconut aminos, you can use Worcestershire sauce. I just um, go with coconut aminos because there's no sugar and molasses in it. But if you've got Worcestershire, you're not going to be using very much of it, so it's fine in this recipe. Um, I've got two teaspoons of minced garlic. We've got a tablespoon of um, brown mustard, two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream. I've got um, a total of one bell pepper here. It's half of a green and half of a red. And I just do that because I like the colors. If you have all red or all green or you don't like one flavor or another, just as long as you got one bell pepper, you're good to go with this recipe. And then we've got two cups of pork rinds that were ground into um, like breadcrumb size. And then this cheese is going in our meatloaf too. I don't know if you guys have ever tried the borzen cheese before. Um, I am kind of new to this cheese, but I have fallen in love with it. It's, it's not really cream cheese, but it's kind of close to cream cheese. And I'm going to open this up and just let you guys see. Um, what it looks like, you peel the little foil back, and that's got this little lid on it that if you're eating it, you know, as a snack or whatever, put that back on. But we're going to be using this whole thing in the meatloaf today, and it's going to, the flavor I'm using is garlic and herb, and it's going to help add moisture, it's going to help bind things together, and just make it more yummy, y'all. So, um, we've got that, I'll toss this box real quick since we're using all of this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to um, saute our uh, peppers and our onions on, on the stove and then once we get that done we're going to cool them off while I'm uh, making the meatloaf and then we'll add everything together and then we'll get going. Okay y'all so I'm getting ready to put the peppers and the onions in and we're going to saute these. Because, and I went ahead and heated my oil up a little bit. It's on medium heat. Um, making a lot of noise to be on medium heat, but we are on medium. So we're going to um, saute the peppers and the onions. And I'm doing this because I want the flavors to mellow and meld together. And um, they just do better in the meatloaf when you saute them first. And it just adds a really nice mellow flavor to the meatloaf. Plus you're not biting into hard chunks of veggies that may not get completely soft. So I have um, about a tablespoon of um, avocado oil in there. And um, I'm getting ready to just put some salt and pepper and a little bit of garlic on these. And this, is, this part is to taste. And I forgot to tell y'all, I've got this body of complete um, spice. If you've never tried this, this is really great because it's got your onion, your garlic, and everything already in there. So I'm going to be adding a tablespoon of this into the meatloaf, the actual meat of the meatloaf when we get ready to mix it up. And I just forgot to tell you that, so I just wanted to let you know. Also, Jenny's here today. Say hey, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> She's still being camera shy, but we're going to get her in front of camera for too long. So really and truly, um, I'm just putting... You know some salt and pepper on top and a little bit of garlic powder because um, remember we like to season the layers as we're going along and um, this is to taste but I like the veggies to have a good seasoning on them as well so we're gonna do this and I'm gonna tell y'all something too my friend Tracy sent me this um, lid holder here and I'll show it to you in just a second. Get this started up real good. <clears throat> but y'all it's amazing. I had never even seen one of these things before she showed it to me. And it's this little thing right here. 
and it just sits on your cabinet or your counter. Don't put it on the cabinet. Put it, leave it on the countertop. And when you take your lid off of your pans, instead of sitting on the stove like I was doing, just put it in here. And all the stuff drains down into the reservoir here. It's so much easier to clean up. And um, I love it. So thank you, Miss Tracy. I appreciate it. And if y'all um, have not seen these and you would like to have one, she told me she got it off of HSM, I think is what she told me. So you might check with them. But it's awesome. I like it. So I'm going to take my lid right now and cover up my veggies. And like I said, we're still on medium heat. And we're just going to cook these through a few minutes until the um, vegetables get translucent, or the onions get translucent. And then I'm going to put them in the refrigerator to cool them off before we actually add them to the meatloaf. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. So y'all know that Miss Macy lives here and she is the queen of the house. So um, I can't give her any of this meatloaf because it's got onions and things in it and some of the spices she can't have either. However... I'm making her her own little meat, meatloaf patty with nothing in it. So any of y'all that are worried about Miss Macy not getting a bite, she's getting her own today. Okay, y'all. So I'm back. And it's been probably about five minutes that these have been sauteed in here. And I'm just going to take them out and put them in one of my bigger pasta bowls. And the reason I'm using this bowl is because I want them to cool off fast. And I'm going to stick them in the refrigerator and let them cool off for about five or ten minutes because these are going in the meatloaf before we put anything else in. So we've got to let them cool down. I don't know about y'all, but I love this mixture. Like I like to eat this on eggs and everything else. This smells really good to me. But I'm gonna stick it in the fridge and then we'll be back in just a few minutes when we make the meatloaf. Okay, y'all, so we I got the veggies out of the refrigerator. We're getting ready to put the pork and the turkey in the bowl here. I got some gloves on so I can keep my fingers kind of clean. Um, and I forgot to tell y'all, I'm going to glaze this with just some of the G. Hughes um, sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. You do not have to do that stuff if you're one of those people that doesn't like glaze on your meatloaf. And I'm only going to do it on the loaf. I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, I'm, because I'm doing this for meal prep, I am going to make some of this into um, a muffin pan. So I'll have a lot of things to go on the go. And um, then I also have a loaf that we're going to do on the can and I'll show you. So I've got the meat in the bowl here. And we're just going to add the veggies in. And I just start off by mixing everything together. Just going to make sure that we've got the vegetables incorporated really well within the meat. And the meats are going to mix up while you're doing this, so you don't have to worry about that. And I, these gloves come off of me, y'all, because my hands are small. <laughs> so we may go through two or three pairs of these things before this is over. But we'll get it done. So, And it's so nice in spring weather down here. I don't know what y'all's weather is doing where y'all are, but here in Georgia, it's finally headed into spring. And I'm so happy about that. And I thought we had a, a little overnight freeze here a few weeks ago, and I thought it was going to kill everything off. In fact, I thought it had. But my azaleas came out, and they're blooming up all pretty. we got hot pink azaleas in my yard, so that's nice. Okay, I got set Macy's little thing over there. So the next thing um, I'm going to add in is our cheese. And I like to do this before I add all the other stuff in because it comes in a block. And you break it up um, and just, you know, put it in and then mix it in as best you can. And it does incorporate really well. See these gloves coming off of me, y'all. <laughs> it incorporates really well. And this is real sticky to start off with. And if you don't mind touching all of this stuff, you don't have to wear gloves. I'm just trying to wear gloves because I'm going to have to be finishing up this video. But if y'all can sort of see here how it's, the cheese is mixing in really nice with the meat and the veggies and everything. And that's what we're going for is just you want to have the cheese incorporated throughout. And it does it fairly easily for you. It probably would be easier for me if I wasn't wearing these gloves. But... I'm going to have to take these off and get another pair. Um, 
so glad I can't get them off, y'all. I'm so glad y'all love me for who I am because I just can't be anybody else. And this is me sometimes. All right, so let me get another pair of these on real quick. Got a little bit of cheese right there that I get out. All right. And um, when I add the garlic and the spices and everything in here, I'm also going to add a little bit more um, salt and pepper in here just because I like it like that. Oh no, the glove has a hole. That will never do. I, you know what, y'all? I'm going to try out with a spoon and let's see what happens. <laughs> Alright, so um, I'm putting in the... Um, complete seasoning that I showed y'all earlier and this is a tablespoon of that but as usual y'all don't worry about the amounts because I'm going to put all of that in the bottom in the description and we're going to put a little bit of salt and pepper on Miss Macy's meatloaf because she doesn't get to have all this other stuff all right and then we're going to put the garlic in And I'm going to also put the coconut aminos in. And like I said, you guys can use Worcestershire if you have it. Um, I just like the coconut aminos better. So that's what I use. And we're going to stir. This spoon's working pretty good, y'all. I'm just going to stir all that in. All right. Is our brown mustard and our eggs and this is just two beaten up eggs I let Jenny beat them up because I wasn't in a beating mood today I know it's like a bad dad joke except it's a mom <laughs> y'all I just feel silly today that's all and so we're gonna stir all this up and it might look scary when you first put it in there because you're like, oh no, that's never going to incorporate, but it's gone. And the pork rinds are going to help um, absorb some of this too. But because it's turkey and pork and they're both really lean, um, we want to make sure, you know, that we get enough stuff in there that's going to make the meatloaf be moist and juicy when it's done. So... <clears throat> Alright, so the last thing that's going in are the pork rinds, and like I said, it's about two cups of pork rinds that we've ground up to like breadcrumbs. And we'll stir those in and incorporate those. I hope all y'all had a good Easter. I had a very nice, quiet Easter. And I, me and Macy really had a nice day. I don't get a whole lot of days where I don't have to go anywhere or do something. And so we had a very nice quiet day and I really enjoyed it. Alright. So we're stirred up here. Okay. Alright, so. Like I told y'all, I'm going to do some meal prep with these. And so I'm going to do six little muffins and then we're going to make the pan the loaf on the pan <clears throat> if you want to do the whole thing in muffin pans and you've got enough of them uh, they only have to bake for 30 minutes it only takes 30 minutes for these to get done the the loaf is going to take anywhere from 45 to an hour and 10 depending on your oven and um, how accurate your measurement for the turkey and the pork is. I made sure today um, that I had to get the pork done today at the grocery store because they didn't have any out so I made sure when I asked for it I told them I wanted exactly a pound. So I'm feeling pretty confident about, uh oh we got a little piece here. I'm feeling pretty confident um, about the measurement on these. So when you put them in the muffin tin, 30 minutes, if you make them on a loaf pan, like I'm going to do the rest of it, I'm going to show you that in just a minute. It's going to be, like I said, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and 10. And also quite delicious. 
and the barbecue sauce that I'm putting on for the glaze um, you cook you're gonna cook your loaf for 30 minutes and then take it out and glaze it and then put it back for another 30 minutes and then you'll be good to go so we've got these set them up here and then I'm going to take my and this is just a regular cookie sheet that I use. Lined it with um, aluminum foil. It makes it easier to clean up. And I'm probably going to have to get my hands in, the, in here for this one. This bowl is super heavy, y'all. So what I do is I just put the mixture out on the pan. And I, I get it in as much of a loaf shape as I can before I start messing with it. because I'm really just going to try to shape it up um, once I get all of it out of the bowl here. All right, let me put this to the side. And I am going to use my clean hands and shape this up some. And it still feels sticky, but I'm telling y'all it's going to cook up and be fabulous. So, and you can make it as wide or as narrow as you want to. Um, I, this recipe makes about 12 servings. Um, sometimes I can get 14 out of it. Like I said, it depends on how accurate the measurement is for the meat before we get started. But I made six of the little muffins there. And so we'll get six servings out of this. So that'll be a total of 12 servings. So this is a great dish if you like meatloaf to make for your food prep and have things ready in advance. Cause I know for me, on days where I'm just running, 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 and I come home and I am so tired, I don't feel like cooking, it is so nice to have something in the freezer that I could just pop in the microwave, you know, and get it done. So, let's, let me get my hands washed here and we'll get this in the oven. muffins in the oven and get Miss Macy's in the oven. Macy's is probably going to take about 15 minutes to cook. That'll be about it on hers. But we'll be back in a half an hour to pull the muffins out and then we'll be back and I'll put the barbecue sauce on when we come back and pull the muffins and then we'll put this back in the oven and we'll pull it out when it's done. We'll have a taste test. Okay y'all so I pulled Macy's little meatloaf out of the oven a few minutes ago about 15 minutes ago and then we all this stuff's been cooking for about 30 minutes let me get this other pot holder because that one doesn't bend too good so these are my meatloaf muffins and they are ready and beautiful and then this is the loaf that we're working on now the loaf has also been cooking for 30 minutes but y'all remember i told you it's going to cook for about an hour so um I'm, go I'm gonna glaze it with the barbecue sauce and put it back in the oven. And that's gonna cook for about 30 more minutes. And I'm gonna be finishing this video up myself because Miss Jenny's gotta go pick up her little girl from school. But um, I just wanted you to see how I do it. And this um, makes a nice little crust on the outside. It's not too crispy. Now, if you wanna get a crispier crust, you can definitely cook it a little bit longer. I don't like it to be so crunchy. Some people love that. So if you if you do like that, you can just leave it in the oven a little bit longer. Um, but I am going to pull this out in about 30 minutes. And after I pull it out, I'm going to put a second coating of the barbecue glaze on it. But that's all I'm doing right now. And then we're going to put it back in the oven and let it cook for 30 more minutes. And then we'll pull it out and I'll cut it and let you guys see the inside of it. It's got a really nice texture, you guys. So when I come back, we'll be doing a taste test. And Miss Macy will be tasting her um, meatloaf too. She must be taking a nap because she's not in here right now. But anyway, we'll be back in just a little while. Okay, y'all, so it's time to pull this meatloaf out. And it's, mine's been cooking about an hour and five minutes. Look at that, y'all. It is so good. And we don't worry about the stuff that's around the edge of the meatloaf because it's 
fine. If you're not going to be serving it, it's not going to come up with your meatloaf. I'm going to go in here, like I said, and put a second coat of barbecue sauce on here. And I'm going to let this rest for about 10 minutes before I cut into it and show you guys what it looks like on the inside. This recipe is nice and um, firm on the inside, but it's still juicy and delicious. So I am going to finish that up right here. And I'm going to cut away in just a minute because Miss Macy's ready for her meatloaf. And we'll give her her meatloaf and see if we can get a seal of approval from Miss Macy. So I'll be back in just a minute. All right, little girl, are you ready for your meatloaf? You going to give Mommy your honest opinion? Are you? All right. Look, I got it. Let's go over here. Let's go over here and eat some of it. You gonna do a you gonna do a dinner dance? Oh, you gonna have what good manners? Very nice. Good job, girlfriend. All right, let's see. What do you think about that? Is it a hit? It looks like it's a hit. <laughs> oh, is that gonna be loaves? Yes. That's yummers. Oh my goodness, going back for a second. Well, that's a good thing. You giving it a pause up, girl? Gosh, you just ate that whole bite. Is it good? Good job. Well, apparently, you guys, that's a yes. All right, I'm going to close this out, and we'll be back in just a few minutes with the other meatloaf. Okay, y'all, so it's been a few minutes. This has cooled off. Really and truly, it will help you if you let your meatloaf rest for five or ten minutes. Um, it just lets all the juices kind of go back into the meat, and it's really, really good. I'm just going to cut an end piece off here so you guys can see the inside of it and see the. it is so smooth. And the texture is really great. I'm going to put these on my plate because I've also got one of the um, muffins that I made, the meatloaf muffins. And so we're going to go over to the table and we're going to have a little taste test. Okay, y'all, so it's time for the taste test. I've got the little small piece of meatloaf here with the barbecue sauce on it. I'm going to try first. And I really do like the barbecue sauce. It's got a nice crust on the outside of it. Mmm. -hmm. I'm so good, y'all. If you are a meatloaf fan, I really do think you're going to love this recipe. And then my little muffins, I rarely put any sauce on them at all because I like to freeze these for food prep too. And so when I pop them in the little baggies and put them in the freezer, it's just grab it and go type of thing. The ones that have got the barbecue sauce on them that I freeze, I'm going to freeze them in a plate and serve them you know, with whatever veggie or um, decide to have for the evening when I have that with it. So put them flat on a plate so the barbecue sauce doesn't really bother anything. But when I stack these in a bag, if I have barbecue sauce all, all over them, it get kind of messy. And I like them without barbecue sauce too. And you can also um, put them like this and then add barbecue sauce later if you want to. Either way is good. But I'm going to give this one a try. Mmm. Mm. You guys, I'm telling you, if you're a meatloaf fan, I really think you're going to love this recipe. It's like I said, it's, I made it because it's low carb and low calorie, and um, I'll have all the macros and everything below for that. Um, Jenny had to leave to go pick up her daughter today, so. I had made one of these yesterday because I always like to test the recipe one more time before I put it out there. And I had made one yesterday and she absolutely loved it. So she took that one home for her family, which is great. Um, and then I'm going to, like I say, use these for meal prep, although I'm eating these for my dinner tonight. So I am filming this on uh, Thursday evening and um, I was going to get it up tonight and I realized I can't. Both of my computers had to go into the repair shop this past week and I got my laptop back yesterday 
but I don't have the software on that laptop that I need to edit the film. So I'm supposed to be getting the desktop back tomorrow, which will be Friday, and hopefully I'll get it back early enough to get the video um, edited and uploaded Friday. So if you're seeing this on Friday, you know I got the computer back in time. If you're not seeing it until Saturday, you know I didn't get the computer back till late Friday evening. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. I hope you'll add it to your repertoire of recipes that are low carb and very satisfying and filling. And I hope that you really do enjoy it. Um, I don't see why we want to go through life eating food that we do not enjoy. So I hope that y'all find recipes here on this channel that you do enjoy. If you like what you saw today, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, I would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. And if you don't want to continue to watch after you subscribe, you can change your mind. But please hit that like button because it really does help people that have just been diagnosed to find my channel. And we all know what it felt like when we got first diagnosed. So thank you so much for supporting me. Thank you for supporting the rest of the um, Type 2 community. And I love you guys. And I hope you have a fabulous week. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.